All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Track 1, Talk 5. Very interesting topic, procrastination and multitasking. So without further ado, please welcome our speaker, Gabriela Vigiano. Yes? No? Not yet? Okay. <clears throat> I brought you some stuff, Damaris, if you can share. Grab one. I didn't know exactly uh, how many people was going to be here, so um, help yourself. Take one sticker. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Um, let's uh, start with procrastination and multitasking, and let's identify if they are truly allies or hidden enemies. Um, this is the agenda I prepared for you. Uh, I selected these two topics. I know there are more, but these are, I think, the more uh, trending. So, if we, and if we have, <clears throat> if we have time, I have a plus one topic for you. Uh, for the more, um, Gabriela Vigiano. Um, Gabby, you can call me. It's easier. I'm a cybernetic engineer. I'm with a master in management. I'm an agile uh, manager in Balsam Brands, Balsam Hills. Uh, how are you going to call it? And a people development coach. Also, ha I'm an, an author of uh, these two books, The Pearl of Your Life and The Monster <clears throat> Inside Me. Uh, let's jump to the uh, topic real quick. So um, there, there is this myth behind the concept of multitasking. You, you can actually uh, identify this skill as a requested uh, ability in, in most of uh, job offers. But <clears throat> the question here is, is it a truly a uh, superpower or it is actually a course. Um, so it, it, it might be beneficial for uh, mechanical tasks or repetitive actions like driving back home using the same path, but even a tiny change, right? It, it, it could turn off that automatic mode. <clears throat> if, if we change the route, if, we, if something happened in the street, something happened uh, and, and this switch just turned off, what, what is actually happening there? <clears throat> well, the reason is that we have this misconception of two terms I uh, consider multi-doer and it uh, doesn't really mean multi-thinker. And to explain a little bit what I mean here is for a mechanical task or a repetitive action, we require more constancy than attention while uh, analytical tasks or tactical decisions, do we require more uh, focus and more consciousness to make those accurate decisions? <clears throat> so it is in the, in the way we approach our activities that, uh, that, that we set this difference. And let's, let's just go back to real quick to these two, there are more, uh, but these two modes, I think, set this difference. The one that I already mentioned, <clears throat> the automatic mode is more related to activities that we do even unconsciously. How many times we've been walking to the kitchen and we open the fridge and we realize I, we, we don't really know what we were looking for or we start driving and two or three blocks ahead we realize we, we don't go to this, the exact route we have. So this kind of automatic modes, um, are painful when we need to change, when we need to improve them, because we need to um, relearn the new step and we need to adapt this new step to our current track. So once it's automatic again, when we already have it in our mind, we can go unconscious again. On the other side for uh, systematic move, we know we are part of a system. We know we have uh, interconnections we really need from each other to even receive something or our actions to get some results for someone else. So every activity we do, we know it has to have a value on its own. And uh, so that, that requires a, a scope in, it, in this activity. We require consciousness in this activity to make, uh, to be aware when something is valuable enough to share. Uh, and uh, innovation and adjustments come naturally because we actually need these improvements to uh, get this dynamic get better. It's everything about quality and it's not, it, it, performance is not in quantity at this point, it's, it's more about uh, quality and this you can get it in this interconnection details, the way we communicate with each other or uh, interact with each other. Mm -hmm. 
Um, let me go. So how do we perform in a more effective multitasker or more systematic tinker, however you want to call it? Um, this is my advice for you, Agile Your Agenda. And so <clears throat> I'm not gonna go to, I'm not gonna talk about Agile this time, but uh, I wanna share these two main topic steps that I consider critical if you wanna go agile in whatever you wanna do, performance, uh, your job or your personal life. So <clears throat> step number one, set up a target, set it clear. Uh, and establish some uh, success criteria so that you can identify whether you're far or close for your, from your goal and if you're actually achieving that goal or not. And then step number two, set a, a flexible uh, plan, but with rock solid uh, goals. So even if you want to, if you have to add a step or you want to modify the current action you you're doing, or you have to delay one of your activities, your goal remains the same. That that's, doesn't change. And there are four considerations uh, whenever you are defining this plan. Uh, make sure that each, <clears throat> sorry, each activity has a value on its own. So whether you want to move from one task to another as a practical multitasker, the activity you are leaving behind has a value on its own and someone else can take it and use it and get a value from it. Um, so you can either change from one task to another or one project to another. We commonly uh, are in multiple activities at the same time. So making this uh, a statement, it, it'll help us to be a multitasker, uh, but more effective multitasker. Number two, accept the change, <clears throat> uh, embrace the change. Um, I, I think it's inevitable nowadays, so the more uh, easy, the, the faster we embrace this challenge of, of updates constantly, the easier and faster we improve them, actually. <clears throat> Number three, uh, act around uh, the quality of your tasks. Um, the, the, quality, the quality of the results that you're providing to others and not exactly to the amount of products or the, of the number of, of um, tasks that you complete. And number four, and for me, the most important, keep, uh, keep a healthy balance. It's not all about work. It's not all about performance. Uh, our brain needs to cool down and it, it actually requires to cool down to, uh, for learning and for repairing itself and for uh, connecting new knowledge. So keep that in mind. Um, maybe see, okay. Uh, procrastination, I would like to know if you've heard about these phrases. Procrastination is the pressure cooker of four minds. Have you heard about that one? Uh, how about the emotional exit of our emotions? I don't think that one is there. But there's a new, I, I, think, I, I think there's. this is the one that everyone knows. Procrastination is the thief of productivity. I think that's the one we all know. <clears throat> okay, so we get this concept as the bad guy of the movie. And, <clears throat> but at the same time, we get to know more often people uh, with a chronic fatigue or emotionally ill or <clears throat> constantly injured for no reason, apparently. And at the same time, we identify more entertainment or relaxation zones in the companies or self-help um, <clears throat> support benefits. Why is, why is this happening if this is the bad guy? Why are we promoting certain relaxation songs, right? It might not be uh, such a bad guy. We just don't know exactly how to handle this one. Uh, <clears throat> so there are some phrases we uh, commonly hear and identify and relate directly to procrastination, and we judge. Um, so let's just, uh, I'll, I'll try to read this for you real quick. So um, it distracts me from my tasks. It looks like a time thief to me. Uh, it happens with force activities like responsibilities, like lack of interest. Then I lose track of time, time thief again. I feel better at the moment. Uh, it, it looks like a lack of responsibility or, and then, but I feel worse after it. At this point, 
even if it's a time thief or a lack of interest, it looks like like both, right? It looks like an emotional warning. It, uh, even if it's an emotional warning, it, it, you already spent a lot of time to figure it out that is, it was an emotional warning. But the highlight, the, the most important thing here to highlight is <clears throat> that is not only about the lack of interest or is not only about the potential indifference to our actions, but the emotional response we uh, get from a certain situation where we feel stressed or we feel overwhelmed or sad or mad, where, where we actually trigger to procrastination uh, activities. So, the key point here is that what we feel doesn't necessarily mean or doesn't necessarily confirm what is happening out there. What, what is happening out there commonly is not in our control, but what we feel does. So the most important here is to identify those emotions and learn how to handle those emotions to be productive even when we are procrastination, <clears throat> procrastinating. So uh, how do we do that? There are tons of self-assessments where you can identify um, what is the root cause of your um, procrastination. There are five questions I think are the most important because of the goal of the assessments is the same. What is going on? Why is, going, uh, why is happening that one? And what are you doing to uh, get back on track to your activities, and if that solution you're providing is actually taking closer to your goals or just surviving to your activities. Then, uh, let me see, I think I can handle those. So when do you try to procrastinate the most is which activities trigger this reaction on you. It might be waking up early, it might, in my case, going to the gym. Um, then what are you trying to avoid? And this might be, what is that, what is that emotion behind this reaction of, uh, I don't know, lack of interest, frustration, lack of results, boring, um, whatever. <clears throat> whatever the feeling you, you get when you do that activity. Then how do you get back on track now that you're aware of this reaction, how do you handle that reaction? And that might be just force yourself to do that activity no matter the result perhaps. For me, setting up a bunch of alarms till I wake up and um, I go to the gym no matter what. Um, then <clears throat> with this solution, whatever the solution is, what are you getting out of there? <clears throat> are you just surviving that activity for that day and then you will rely on the same situation tomorrow or you're improving even for a small step? Um, and the last one, in my son, a little bit less related, but it's critical because that's the way we um, ask ourselves if we are willing to make that extra effort uh, to, to pursue our goals, to, to achieve those goals. So how do we keep those goals into perspective, uh, trying to identify if whatever the solution we are providing uh, is moving forward, and if not, if we are willing to uh, change that reaction to a more productive activity. Um, so that's the first part. The second part pretty much is action, taking everything to action. So let's state something. Procrastination is not going anywhere. We all procrastinate, but the, what we can do is to become more effective even by procrastinating from time to time. So here are five steps I would like to recommend you. So one of them is assess all your activities including the ones that you don't recognize, like the unconscious ones. Um, then <clears throat> number two, try to pair those activities to your goals. Identify the ones that are not adding any value to your, um, to your goals. Do not discard them yet. We'll, we're going to do it on the next step. Um, then and number three, delimit those activities. It, it's harder to avoid those activities, so let's start by delimiting the time you spend in those uh, in those activities. Let's say you spend a lot of time in the internet, try to uh, limit the amount of time you spend there. If you can redirect those activities, uh, do so, it's even better. Let's say you spend, again, more, much time in the internet, try to, instead of looking nothing valuable, try to look something that might be related to your goals. If you're learning a new language, perhaps 
looking at the videos in that language will force you to learn at least some new words from time to time. Same if you're trying to achieve some fitness goals, uh, at least try to look something related to your uh, exercise or your goals. Number four, rely on discipline. So um, motivation fluctuates around, thank you, um, emotions like waves and um, Discipline usually keeps our boat uh, afloat, no matter the storm. So keep your, fo your boat afloat, uh, uh, no matter the storm that you're living. And number five, act. Um, this, is a, this is not an, a one uh, only step. It's a forever in, in progress challenge. So keep doing it, keep learning. Let yourself fail and uh, learn to uh, adjust quickly, um, improve, and act again. Uh, this is the number, the plus one topic. So whatever the, the strategy you uh, decide to take to become a more effective multitasker or a more productive person, even while procrastination, there are three goals. Gold rules that I would like to share, I call them DOR. It's pretty straightforward, what do. Do not uh, take everything to paper. After you uh, go out here, just try to uh, ad implement something. Um, let yourself fail, adjust accordingly, and repeat till you get something that you like. Um, and for the ones that took uh, some sticker, you can use that sticker to focus from time to time. So three steps to succeed, um, to succeed whenever you want to go back on track uh, to your goal or to the activity you're doing. Step number one, calm down. Step number two, uh, focus. If you have something that uh, can help you uh, slow down, like a target sticker or an image or whatever, uh, to me is a song. Uh, focus on that uh, very next step of your goal. Um, once it's loud and clear in your mind, you would know exactly what next activity you have to do and just hold on tight to it and, and go for it. Um, uh, finally, where motivation is low, that's where discipline kicks in, Jarul. Thank you. Any questions? All right, thank you, thank Gabriela. You.